So you're either shopping for a DaVinci Resolve speed editor, or you want me to reaffirm you made the right choice because you've already ordered one? Either way, I've been using it for the past two months, and so today I'm going to share with you the five things I love about it, the pros, and the five things I don't. We'll call those opportunities to explore unmet potential. All to answer the question, is the speed editor worth buying? I think it'll be obvious by my criticism in this video, but it is in no way affiliated with or sponsored by Blackmagic Design in any way. I paid for the speed editor with my own money because I was excited about it. And so that way you know all my thoughts and opinions are as honest as can be. The first opportunity the speed editor did not explore was the idea of having an audio only crossfade. It's something you use all the time, but you have to take your hands off of the speed editor, put them on the keyboard. And you actually have to do it in the edit page. You can't do it in the cut page. So I would love if there was a way for you to add audio only crossfades with a single button. Just like we have five buttons already dedicated to transitions. Why can't one of them just be audio only crossfades? It'd be so easy. And it's something we use on every single cut we make. So to balance things out, my first pro would be the fact that the speed editor is actually free. It's free if you buy the DaVinci Resolve Studio paid version, either the dongle or the license key. Um, which is 300 bucks, um, but you'd pay that either way if you just wanted the software by itself. So the fact they're giving it away for free right now, it is February 2021. I don't know how long it's going to go on for, but that's a great thing. Resolve Studio gives you a clean feed to an external TV monitor. What that means is you used to always have to purchase these Ultra Studio mini monitors. I have actually two of these for my two offices. And what this did is it took the um, a Thunderbolt out of here and it connected to HDMI up to like a TV or any sort of reference display. You actually don't need these anymore if you want to see a full screen view of what you're color correcting or editing. Um, if you buy the studio version and get the speed editor free, that's included. It's just like a, a drop down feature in the menu that I'll probably be showing you right now with B-roll. So I'll put a link in the description below to Blackmagic's site specifically stating all the difference between studio and the free version. Uh, but things I like off the top of my head with Studio are um, some of the things like noise reduction, face refinement, uh, the beauty features, so I can look beautiful. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's a smart conform, which lets you do an Instagram or a cutout of your widescreen video. There's the close-up button, which lets you do a punch in, and all that stuff is kind of tracking faces. So that's kind of the key to a lot of that, that magic that happens. But the biggest thing was that there is um, codec support for everything. A friend of mine has the GH5 and he shot 10 bit with it and I couldn't see it in the free version. So that was one reason we initially purchased our first license of the studio version was for all the support. Speaking of support, my name is Chadwick and this is Creative Video Tips where I help you create videos that make a difference and stand out. If that's something you're into and you haven't already done so, please click subscribe right down below. That way you don't miss out on my tip next week. Um, we've been having a lot of fun using DaVinci Resolve and the speed editor lately, so there's a lot of great stuff to learn from on the channel. And with that out of the way, let's jump back over and we'll take a look at opportunity to explore unmet potential number two. So opportunity number two is there is no way to insert a gap or filler using the speed editor. In fact, there's no way to do it at all in the cut page as far as I understand. Um, you have to go into the edit page, use a command like option Y, and then you can, you know, select it and push things down to open up some air. I think it's a missed opportunity for sure, um, especially because they have a, a full size keyboard, the DaVinci Resolve keyboard. And I believe F2 on that keyboard is a way to insert some sort of black slug. Would love to see that added because editing is all about pacing and timing. And if we can't get that pacing dialed in with out taking our hands off of this, uh, well, that's a missed opportunity. My second pro is kind of the headline feature if you just look at the thing. It has a search dial. It's like a jog shuttle wheel. It's a great, fun new way to move around on the timeline. Um, there are so many reasons that I love it. They actually have a video I'll probably link up right now that tells you all the 16, or there's actually 17 ways that you can use the thing. Um, but it just makes editing a lot more fun. If it's if editing is something you do all the time and you've done for years, I've been editing for about 20 years, and it's just a fresh new way of looking at the same old thing, which to me, that's a huge pro. The next opportunity I've got is the fact that the middle of the speed editor is covered in multicam buttons. And those multicam buttons do not work with traditional multicam in the edit page of Resolve. So, I mean, the speed editor is made to work with the cut page, that's clear. But those multicam buttons could be used in multicam in both sync bin and traditional multicam. 
but they only work with Syncbin. Now Syncbin's a lot of fun and you get to use the search style and if you don't know how to use that, there's there's a video that's probably popping up right now that'll teach you about how to use that and, and go back and forth. But I would just love if the multi-game buttons would actually work in both edit and cut page versions of you know changing up multiple cameras at the same time. So the next pro I have about using the speed editor is the way you can use source tape with it. And source tape is something they introduced in the cut page not too long ago. But what it does is it lets you look at all your footage from a whole project or just a specific bin. You get to choose it like how detailed or how far down the breadcrumb trail you're looking at. It lets you look at all of that really quickly, uh, just scrubbing with the search dial, um, using shuttle, jog, scroll, those features on there. And you can refine it, marking ins and outs, and then hitting source again, it lets you get more detail. So, um, and then you just back out with the escape button. There's, there's a lot of flexibility to the buttons that are on here to using source tape that it makes it a super functional and really fast way to work. So we're moving right along and the next opportunity or misstep that I think the speed editor has is the fact that there's a dedicated button for smooth cut. Um, smooth cut, if you don't know, it's a way of using optical flow to transition from one shot to the next shot. It kind of blends those together and makes up its own frames. Problem is it's really only a very niche use case scenario. So. I think I've probably used it three or four times in an entire year, so I don't need a whole button dedicated on the speed editor just for smooth cut. It's a waste of space. It could be like a user customizable button in my opinion, um, something you could change in user preferences that would be really helpful because there's other buttons like you know like I talked about insert gap or you know there's there's quite a few that I would love to have that space back for. Somebody is really proud of that smooth cut, so that's why it's appearing on here. Um, I would just nix it if they made another version and, and maybe we'll get lucky and there's a way we can customize it. But yeah, this is definitely an opportunity to explore uh, further growth was to let's, let's ditch the smooth cut dedicated button. The next pro I've got is the fact that this thing is small, it's portable, it's lightweight, it's made out of plastic, but it's high quality plastic. The keys are mechanical and it feels good to touch and search dials metal and so it has ball bearings. It's really smooth. I'm not saying it's it's crappy. It's just it's lightweight and small, which is awesome because I work in two different edit suites. This is my home suite and then I have another office that I go to. And so I want to be able to take this to and from there, or maybe you're going from an edit suite to an on-set location. This is great for that. It's not like the uh, DaVinci Resolve mini panel for color grading or their micro panels. Those are made out of a lot of metal pieces. They're not easy to transport. This is the opposite of that. Uh, to transport it, I've got um, a Pelican Vault V100 case here that I just picked up, and it looks to be the perfect size. Um, on the inside, it uses that closed cell foam that this is the one you actually have to cut out. It's not that pick and pluck stuff, um, but this will be a great way so that I can just throw the speed editor in the back of the truck and not worry about damaging it because they're so hard to find in stock right now that I would hate if something were to break. Um, but the fact that it's portable, I can take it to any room and just sit down and start cranking away. I love that about it. Another missed opportunity on the speed editor keyboard, it's, uh, it's another key, just like Smooth Cut was. This one is actually Source Overwrite. And Source Overwrite, if you don't know, it only works with synced timecodes. So if you're not working with cameras that have been jam synced or you know used a ambient locket box or a tentacle sync, then it's, it's just a waste of space. I mean, most people that are buying this and using this are not gonna have synced timecode. So why not make the Source Overwrite button overwrite? Overwrite would let us maintain timing of your video by just you know swapping it out on, on video one so we can keep a real nice, tidy, clean timeline like I like it. Um, there is Ripple Overwrite, which is a cool feature, but Ripple Overwrite is going to change the overall length of your video. Uh, what Ripple Overwrite does is it takes this, the, whatever your source in and out point is, it's going to maintain that length as you do the Ripple Overwrite and it swaps out the clip so it, it's not going to keep your timing of your video, which is something that Overwrite can do. Um, you can still do overwrite, uh, it's F10 I believe on the keyboard uh, if you want to use the keyboard, but then you're taking your hands off the speed editor and that kind of defeats the purpose of this whole using two hands on here. So that's why I think the source overwrite button on the speed editor was maybe a missed opportunity and should have just been the simple regular old overwrite. Another thing I really love about the speed editor is a button that's going to save you a lot of time that a lot of people are probably not going to talk about. 
It's the transition duration set button. What's cool about transition duration set is you hold it down, you move the search dial, it changes your length. That's the duration part. But the set part uh, lets you lock in a new default for your project. So once you double tap that transition duration, it's locked in your default. So the next time you drop a dissolve down on your timeline, it's to that exact length. So maybe you want a short transition for you know getting rid of, rid of uh, pops and clicks or a longer transition for music. And you don't have to go up to the settings menu each time to change that default uh, duration, that default length. So the set function on this transitions is freaking amazing. So if you can overlook these opportunities and focus on the pros like a professional, then I think the speed editor might be right for you. And if you like this video at all, make sure to give it a like. And if you wanna learn more about the speed editor or DaVinci Resolve in general, I have a tutorial playlist popping up right over here right now. Uh, it'll teach you everything you need to know about the speed editor, about trimming, about multicam. There is so much to learn. So I'll see you over in that next video.